Hey there, and welcome to this screencast, which is about Scoreflash version 3.1. It's kind of release notes on video. And uh, first of all, um, if you update, um, I would recommend for this version, actually also for the last one, but in general, you, you don't have to do that. It's not like there's a problem if you don't do it, but I would still recommend it because I've cleaned up the folder structure and um, when importing a package, Unity won't, um, it will respect your folder structure, so it won't um, inherit the new folder structure. Um, so that's kind of nice here. Well, since I've deleted that, the prefab link is gone, but as soon as my package is imported, that'll be back. Um, but as usually, if you're not using version control, you should definitely um, uh, make a backup um, of your project before adding new stuff or upgrading stuff. I don't expect any problems. Um, usually there shouldn't be any problems, but yeah, Murphy's Law, uh, always when it's least expected and most annoying, then there is a problem that no one could have uh, foreseen. So anyways, um, the first new feature that I want to show you um, is really awesome for new users, but also for people who have been using Scoreflash for a little while, this might be helpful. Um, there's tooltips on all the fields, and these tooltips have the information that you also would find in the API documentation, but it's a little bit difficult to look it up there. And um, so I think this is uh, something that probably, hopefully a lot of people will appreciate. And one thing that you may notice, there's this um, C uh, type, scoreflash rendering type um, in, in brackets, and that actually has a meaning. If you switch on show documentation, you see all the documentation in the in the inspector, and it really makes sense to go through all the different um, properties and, and and really learn about them to really understand them. And with these buttons, I have the possibility to actually link into the browser, so I can also add information or or links to information that's not directly on the fields. For instance, here this uh, Unity GUI skin, the default method using GUI skin, then. Uh, you can directly assign the fonts or the custom renderers. Um, so the documentation is not really fully integrated into Scoreflash, which I think is very nice. Um, the next thing you may notice um, here, screen align has now middle center, top center, and bottom center. We've had that before. But now we got top left, middle left, um, and and so on, and, and, and right alignment. So I can align Scoreflash anywhere in the screen. And the really awesome thing um, is that I've created a designer for that. So you can very intuitively position your Scoreflash instance right on the screen. And you also see where it is on the um, uh, in the game view. Uh, one thing to notice here, if you click anything else than Scoreflash, this doesn't unselect Scoreflash. This is not usual, but it makes a lot of sense because it's very annoying if you click like right here next to that and then it's unselected and then you have to go to the hierarchy view and click it again. So um, I'm, I'm doing this for Scoreflash and Scoreflash layout, which I will show you in a second. Um, you can also position this freely. This basically is um, the position relative to screen align. So if I go here, um, like, like uh, 30 pixels, um, 74 pixels to the right and 30 pixels down, when I go back to top left, then you see that it's um, from the left and from, from, from the top. But if I would go to bottom right, it's from the right and from the top because I think that's uh, much easier. And that's also the reason why I'm moving the buttons around because that shows you where approximately that um, score, flash score flash message will appear when, when you click um, that button. If you find those buttons annoying because you want to um, do specific positioning, you got this lock here. Um, and that's that makes it much easier to to have the screen available for positioning. And you also see that this um, always shows you where the reference point is from which the position, which you can also see here, um, uh, from 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 where that counts. Um, there's another lock here, um, and as you can see, define arbitrary inner anchors. This is for defining how the message is positioned. And most of the time you don't need that. But for instance, if you have top left alignment and you want the message um, still to be right aligned, because for instance, maybe it's numbers, then you could use that. 
And as usual, this also works in play mode. So when I um, activate auto generate messages, you'll see that there's these messages. And what you also see here is another of the new features. And that is that we have both um, X coordinates and Y coordinates. Here it's the offset that you can control. And you also have the um, animation curves for that to fine tune how that moves. And you also have the velocity on the X um, and and the fade out phase the, the, the same. So you can really do very, very nice um, kinds of animations now, which I think um, should make Scoreflash much more useful for a lot of people. Now, with all these um, layout possibilities, um, we're going back here to the layout. Um, I felt it's not really convenient if you have many instances of Scoreflash just for the different layout settings. Like you want the same animation, you want the same font, all the same, um, but you want, yeah, one, one thing on top left and maybe another one top left on another position. So for this, I've created um, a new component. Um, I've called it score flash layout. Um, I'm just giving it the game object that name um, for fun. <laughs> and because I think it's kind of nice to have that name, actually I would call it layouts. Um, well, all right, I'll stay with layout. And then I'll say top left one and top left two. Um, pull these down there. And what I will now do is I will attach a component, which is called score flash layout. Um, you can also find this here under plugins and score flash layout. I'm going to use that for assigning the second one. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to activate design and scene view. Actually, that already is activated. I'm going to deactivate testing for the score flash instance because that will be a little bit confusing if I keep that activated. And now I will position top left one, top left, as you probably would have guessed. And I will move it a little bit into the screen. You can see here where it is on screen. Um, something like this. And um, maybe you've noticed that there's this other um, lock here. That's the width. And you can control the maximum width um, with this um, for the message. This mes message should be very wide. And um, I could ignore the padding. Well, I can also keep it. it. It takes the smaller one anyways. So that's um, uh, not really a problem. For the second one, I'm going to do the same, but I will do that thing that I will position it right aligned and a little bit more, sorry, that was left aligned, right aligned. And I will use the width to make sure that this doesn't go too far. By the way, well, with this, you can always, um, it's kind of like a rescue, rescue button that um, changes the position to zero, zero, zero. Um, and another thing that I think is also quite awesome, you can now select two Scoreflash instances at the same time. Well, actually, layouts, it doesn't work for Scoreflash instances because there you don't really need it. And so this makes positioning this very, very convenient. And what I'm going to do now is I will attach a super simple script that I've created. Um, basically, this is just text. And then it pushes that text into the score flash layout. Score flash layout has its own push methods to make this really convenient. And I will attach that script um, here. Um, and the label is label, well, let's say um, score, <laughs> as um, score flash the name implies, even though it can do so many more things. So when I hit play now, um, you will be a little bit disappointed, score, and then score fades out. That's not really what we wanted. But there's this new feature, freeze on read, that is available on Scoreflash layout and Scoreflash follow 3D. Um, and Scoreflash follow 3D, you could, for instance, use it for name tags. And if I activate that, what happens now is that the message goes through the fade in phase. And when it's reached the read phase, it stops and stays where it is and nothing happens. 
until the next mes message is pushed, which in this case will never happen because we don't push another message. Um, so what you see now is we got score. And if I activate testing for this one here, we got a really nice way of showing our scores. And position that a little bit. And obviously, this long text doesn't really fit in there, but for scores, as you can see, this is really, really nice now. Um, but what if the player reaches a score and then for a little while nothing happens? You don't want all this movement in there. So here I could do the same thing. I could do freeze on read. And now if there's a lot of messages, well, the messages come in and go. Um, but if I take a little bit longer delay, what you see now is the message stays until the next message arrives. And that's the reason why Scoreflash layout has this and also Scoreflash for the 3D, because there that really makes sense. But for a generic Scoreflash instance, I thought this doesn't really make sense to keep the messages and then push them out. That's why you don't have it there. Um, yeah, so with this, you can really do some pretty fancy um, layout and, and GUI design. And there's just one more thing that I want to show you. And that is um, the designer also exists for um, Scrollflash Follow 3D. And there it's actually super useful because um, you can now change the 3D offset and the 2D offset very conveniently. Uh, with the designer. That's, uh, I believe, a pretty nice thing. Uh, one thing you may notice, um, usually when you click out, outside of an item, like you try to click here, but you click next to that, um, the selection is, is canceled. Now, with a 3D object, that's not a problem because you just click it and you're back. With score flash, if that was the case, it would be tremendously annoying because you would, if you click something, it's unselected and then you have to click it in the hierarchy. That's the reason why for score flash, and the layouts, I've disabled that. So if you click here, you don't unselect it. That's it. I hope you like Scoreflash. I hope you tell all your friends about it. And um, uh, 3.1 will be released um, about, I would say, probably February 22nd or maybe even February 21st. We'll see. And um, yeah, talk to you in the forums. Bye.